to talk more about this, we're now joined uh, by Shoran Esperson from the uh, Danish People's Party, who's uh, been uh, pushing for these uh, stricter laws on immigration. Uh, thank you for joining us today. So the, the new measures have now been voted through and are currently being implemented, but doesn't it violate the principles of the Schengen Zone Agreement of free visa travel, which applies among many European countries? Well, our government certainly doesn't think so. Our government has stated that this is within the Schengen Treaty. I must say that the idea of open borders uh, throughout Europe has shown to be a utopia. And we have had the choice now of you, the European idea or reality. As we live in the real world, we can see that what comes across our borders and not least, at least what is leaving Denmark uh, with stolen goods have increased. We cannot sit and just watch that happen. That is why we have introduced the border control. So you talk about the, the stealing of goods, you talk about this uto utopian world here, but what, what else? What is it that Denmark is so afraid of, that you have to clamp down the borders like this? We are not afraid. Uh, we just want to be certain that within what's, what comes into the country is something we want into the country. We don't want drugs. We don't want weapon uh, smuggling. We don't indeed want uh, people who come here in, in a wrong errand. We don't want people also to leave the country with stolen goods. We just have to look at our people's interest. And if you ask like the normal uh, European person, even in Germany, you will see an overwhelming understanding for the Danish position. We cannot live in utopia if it means that our country and our people are not safe. Now, you mentioned the issue of drugs and weapons. You don't want those, uh, those in, in, in Denmark. But, uh, I mean, come on, let's get down to it. Isn't it, isn't it about immigrants and, and multiculturalism that multiculturalism has failed? No, I don't think we should come down to it. Uh, I'm telling you the truth and what the reason is for this. I mean, we're not introducing a border control with passports. We would like to see that in our party, but this is not part of the, of, of the treaty with the government and the agreement. What we are doing now is introducing a control of goods. And if that also means that people who come here in an illegal errand, smuggling in drugs, they get uh, taken by the police, I think that's only a byproduct product that's really good. All right, now, uh, Germany's foreign minister has already said that Denmark's new laws endanger EU cooperation, while uh, other EU officials have also criticized the move. Are we seeing a split, do you think, among the European Union on this issue? There's no doubt about it. I mean, as I said in the beginning, this is what happens when this system uh, with the idea is being overtaken by reality. The same thing we see with the euro, the introduction of euro, even in countries that, that weren't meant to have, have the euro and couldn't deal with it in the proper way. We see the EU idea disintegrating. I can see that happening all over the place, not only in Denmark. We might just be the first one to to take steps uh, to avoid uh, further problems for our country. But you are right, the EU as an idea, as an ideology, if you like, is disintegrating. Now, uh, a few moments ago, you mentioned the issue of the euro. Um, where is the money going to come from uh, to support uh, uh, these new custom controls? Or do you think it's reasonable to use uh, public funding at a time when, when the eurozone is just teetering on the brink? Well, I think that uh, safety and security for our people cannot be paid uh, on, on too high, uh, too high a cost. We pay what's necessary. This introduction of the, the permanent border controls adds up to around about 150 million uh, Danish uh, krona, and I think that's a, a reasonable pace to uh, pay to price, uh, price to pay. Uh, for, for security and safety for our people. Now, there's been an influx of immigrants uh, to the EU from the Middle East and North Africa after this ongoing unrest there. Do you think uh, the EU is now paying a price for that? Well, uh, about the influx of, of people from North, North Africa, I mean, after the, the revolts, I mean, they, that's only uh, very much a South European uh, problem, uh, I believe, a problem between Italy and France, especially. Uh, most of the people that come from Northern Africa want to go to France uh, because m many of them speak French. So that is a problem that has got really nothing to do with this uh, border control issue. Now, forgive me for, for stepping in here, We're running very low on time here, but do you think other members of the EU should follow suit and, and do what Denmark is doing by uh, tightening up the borders? That's up to them, but I see like the Germans especially are doing it already. And I, in Saarbrücken, you go to the border with Saarbrücken and you will find that they are already introducing a permanent border control there. So I think Germany is already doing uh, what they accuse us to do. Maybe we do it a bit more open than they do. All right, uh, Sharon Espersen, who's the uh, Danish People's Party spokesman on foreign affairs. Many thanks.